Good morning and welcome back to Subsistence. So I am here playing the new alpha from Cold Games. There's been a new update available at the moment in Experimental. You just need to simply opt into uh, Experimental via the beta tab in Steam. Um, just a quick note, if you do do that, make sure that you back up your saves. There's about 31 of them. Um, there are details in the Steam forums on how to do that. Um, the reason I'm recommending that is you can move forward in alphas with a save game, but you can't move back. So if for any reason you decided to try out Alpha 52, this update, and later decided you wanted to go to alpha back to Alpha 51, you would just need to reload your previously backed up saves in order to do that. Um, but as usual with all updates from Cold Games, there is no need to restart your world. Everything has been done with care and everything that you had previously built is functional. Um, so uh, I know he definitely takes a lot of care and attention to make sure that we can just continue playing our worlds. Uh, but some really big exciting changes in this alpha. So I'm going to run through them as quickly as I can, so a little bit of talking here at the beginning. Uh, we'll start here in the BCU. First of all you'll notice there is a new HUD um, display, some tweaks to the HUD. Um, it's been overhauled basically. We now have images rather than a text list, so it's very quick and easy to see what you want to craft click on it and it'll tell you the ingredients if you've got those in your inventory the craft button is illuminated and you can craft those items so pretty awesome I think it looks great uh, everything's got a slight sort of shadow behind the item now as well which helps if you're looking at the sun for example when you're opening your menu or as I am here the um, the light in the background there really makes them pop in the uh, in the menu um, right, okay, so new craftable items. We have a lathe. It's fully animated. The um, the carriage there moves and sparks fly off and, you know, makes lovely sounds as everything does that um, Cold Games brings in. Um, so uh, really nice looking item. It's not too expensive to build, a bit of scrap. Uh, six circuit boards is probably the biggest amount of labour uh, to get those together and uh, eight alloy sheets 2000 power and 250 mass is quite a big chunk so you can see this is a what they're call, what core games is referring to this as a high tier workbench so this is a bit later on in the game stage and this will allow you to craft advanced mechanical items such as the new elevator the elevator carriage itself and the elevator tracks that allow you to connect floors and go up and down um, from floor to floor. And the elevator switch can be crafted in here. Oh, and also the BCU craft, uh, cracker has now been moved to be crafted within the lathe rather than the workbench where it used to be made. Um, okay, and we have another big game changer. We've got animal traps and fish traps. Animal traps will catch small game, so rabbits and chickens. Um, you need to bait the animal trap with medicinal herbs or fruits and vegetables. The fish trap, you can only catch small fish, but that is baited with tree grubs or rotten meat. Um, fish traps need to be sort of placed in a lake, obviously, not a stream. Uh, best to place them around the shore so that you can get to them to repair because they will need repairing. They only last about three in-game days. And if you don't go and check them regularly, the items that are caught inside will die and rot. Uh, so something to be aware of. Um, again, you'll need a hammer to repair these two items. Three, three in-game days is a little bit short in my opinion, um, but, you know, manageable. And I think for early game farming of fish oil, the fish trap is going to be 
absolutely um, essential. So that that's going to be really good to uh, to try out. I've made a couple and we'll go and play some very soon. Um, the hammer, by the way, is no longer no longer craftable in the BCU. It's now in your player inventory. So for those of us who like to delay placing the BCU at the beginning of the game for a few days to get established, um, you can now repair your base and do upgrades and that sort of thing. So that's really nice that that's changed uh, in such a way. Oh, um, in the house um, option here in the menu as well, we've got a decorative item that's been added. Cold Games has said that he's going to bring in some more of these as time goes on, but this is the first one. And it's a rug, and it's using six cotton, so probably unlikely I'm going to get to build one of these very soon. Six cotton, um, 20 fibre and three sinew. Uh, purely cosmetic it makes a nice sound as you walk across it and it, it looks cool so nice that those sorts of things are coming in to uh to the game now um last thing um with the new buildables there's a, a bcu range extender now previously if you had a big base perhaps with a a uh, surrounding wall for your compound for example and you wanted to put some floodlights around the outside of the base uh, or put your mining drill out you know alongside the wall for example away from the building um, you'd have to place a couple of BCUs to make sure that your compound was covered um, now we have this BCU range extender so that was always a, a stopgap I think Cold Games described that as um, you'd need to place your original BCU and then the next one would have to be in the blue bubble from the first one in order to kind of link them all together. Now you simply place a BCU range extender instead. They're quite expensive, I'm quite surprised. Um, a, a, an ingot each and a circuit board each, whereas the uh, base command unit was just some scrap and electrical components and wooden planks so it's a more expensive option but I think these are probably smaller and they probably look cool uh, again you've got to place them within the bubble the blue bubble of the BCU and that will expand uh, the uh, the power range for the BCU to work across your compound um, let me just check fires and things like that because we've been talking a little while and I haven't really done anything to feed and sort myself out. Let's grab some water. Okay, so we've talked about the lathe. I've got a little list here. We've talked about the lathe, the elevator, the BCU, cracker moving, animal traps, fish traps, uh, the hood overhaul, the rug, the BCU range extender and the hammer. Um, Right, on to my, my favourite feature of this update. And I want to go upstairs and outside for this. It's an in-game map. If you haven't seen it already, it's pretty impressive. If you have seen it already, here's a little thing that I um, discovered by accident. If you aim down sights using your rifle and then bring up the map by pressing M for the map. That's my um, key binding for, for the map, of course you get a lovely zoomed in version of the map. I'll show you the difference in a second between the, the different levels of zoom if you like. There's my roof, there's me standing on the roof and the water is animated so basically like it's just a, an aerial view of the current world um, but I think it's really nicely done. Uh, there's a fog of war so as you run around and explore the map this will be revealed and just a note that if you had uncovered your local hunters or maybe had a, a rogue camp perhaps over here, uh, you, you can see their fire, you can see their structures. And at night when they're wandering around the fire and, you know, out in the world chopping trees and stuff, you can see their blue light moving around on the map in real time. So. It's going to be great for when they start their attack and they come running across the world. You're going to know exactly which base they came from and you're going to know exactly how long it's going to take to get to you. So I can see myself spending a lot of time looking at this map, 
during those long dark nights. So that's the zoomed in view with the rifle. Let me show you the zoomed in view with the bow, which is a shorter zoom. But can you see the difference? You get, um, you know, a much, uh, much smaller view of the map with a bit less perhaps detail visible. And let me just take off the zoom on the arrow there, on the bow, and show you the map again, again less detail but of course if you had more area unlocked you would be able to see more of the map from this view so what a lovely and unexpected feature within this map i'm, I'm very very impressed i think it's one of my favorite things so far of the update um oh there have been some performance uh, improvements now you'll notice looking at the sun there we have a parallax flare effect uh, when we look at the sun now so you'll see there's a, like a little rainbow effect and some little sunspots and that sort of thing on the lens um, for example so those sunsets and sunrises are going to be absolutely beautiful for um for my screenshots and so and so on um now, did I mention there's a new fish? I can't remember now. Um, I talked about the fish traps catching small game, uh, small fish, but um, yeah, there's a new fish, um, only catchable with the rod, obviously, um, from the lakes, and it's a largemouth bass. Um, you don't get anything new, particularly material-wise, from it, but it's nice to have a new, a new fish to catch. Um, oh yes, and the other almost half of the um, the work that must have gone into this update the other big change is massive performance overhaul uh, we can now get up to 144 frames per second it's a, an option available in the menu no longer frame locked at 60 frames per second um, Cold Games has achieved this by um, amending the build structure rendering performance so Previously, it used to render in every item individually for every single buildable item that you had in the game. And that would take up performance um, capacity. So um, I think it's now done some magic with meshes and um, done some jiggery pokery with the uh, animated base items as well. Because if you're not animating a door, why would you need to render that? you know and impact your performance um there is no sort of um, static mesh meshes for animated items um all of this has enabled him to really make some massive fps um, improvements for the game also um the same sort of performance um, work has been done with the world rendering so foliage um all the the grass and the plants and the flowers and all that sort of good stuff and trees so distant trees now are much um less hungry meshes and uh, yeah it's just really improved the game performance markedly i mean uh, it runs beautifully it always has done but um it's even better now um yeah so that is the update in a nutshell a lot of talking and uh, I, I am sorry about that but really worth going through all of these changes i think um just to appreciate the, the amount of work that must have gone into it uh we're very lucky i think right okay we better get out there and go and do some hunting and looting because i need food i think i'm gonna start by getting this wolf oh there's a berry Right, come here, wolf. Let's have you, and then we'll get the berry. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go and cook you up. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, feed myself, water myself, and get back sort of into a, a routine. Because we've just spent a lot of time talking, and I kind of feel like I need to refocus again. Let's just grab this iron. So I hope that all made sense. There was a lot to cover. It looks like there were two iron ores there and one of them uh, 
Yeah, one of them uh, disintegrated as I was looking at it. Yeah, I hope it made sense. There was a lot to cover, but I think it was important just to, to go through and just appreciate, as I say, the work that must have gone into this update, because it's pretty incredible in my eyes. Uh, all of this performance um, saving, by the way, just enables um, further updates along the, along the way. So bigger map, more items to build, larger bases are possible, all that sort of good stuff. So bring it on. I'm, I'm here for all of it. I think it's going to be, yeah, going to be great to see what we can do in the future. OK, all right, we've got plenty of power there. Uh, we're not doing too badly for power at the moment. Let's put this uh, biofuel away. Uh, I'm going to eat the berry. Uh, we're fine for water. I just need a little bit of food. Um, I did use a lot of 9mm ammo, killing a couple of cougars in between episodes, by the way. So I've been building up my sinew. Uh, as you can see, I've made a few metal ingots. Um, got a bit of sinew, oh, adhesive, sorry. Uh, but there is something that I wanted to craft today, or I was thinking of crafting, um, which is the mining drill. Um, moving forward, I think you always get these bottlenecks of materials. Now, I don't have a lot of copper refined here. I do have a little bit of iron. Um, but if you look at my levels, I've got a lot of iron unrefined. I don't have a lot of zinc and I don't have a lot of copper in comparison. So I was thinking of um, actually crafting up the BCU, the mining drill, sorry. And I've got plenty of power to do that. I need 120 mass. Now you can see here I have crafted up 40 sticks. And what I did, little trick... Um, that somebody very kindly told me in the comments is um, for every piece of wood uh, it gives you a one for one ratio in the recycler if you craft instead of using that wood raw if you craft sticks from that wood you get 1.2 instead of one item of mass so for 20 pieces of wood I've crafted 40 sticks and I've got 24 mass, so I've got four extra mass just for the sake of a little bit of crafting time. So I'm going to recycle all those sticks and I now have my 120 mass. I'm going to put the generator on and let's have a look at what we need to craft up this uh, mining drill. So I'm going to need two circuit boards, ten scrap metal and three rope. Right, I'm going to need... Did I put these to one side? No. I'm going to need some rope then, first of all. So we're going to need three ropes. So we've got plenty of sinew and cordage to make that. Three rope, there we go. Let's put the cordage away the uh, sinew away and the cordage of course right so I've got my two circuit boards I think I need some scrap that was the other item mining drill ten wooden planks that's the other thing right we've got six so let's get crafting some wooden planks we'll do another four of those awesome lovely um, okay, now before it gets too dark and we're waiting for the crafting to be done, let's go and place our our traps. So we'll place the animal trap first. Uh, oh, I didn't mention, by the way, but you need to place these away from sort of high traffic areas. Um, you need to leave them sort of in an undisturbed area. There we go, a little door's open. I'm going to bait it with three medicinal herbs. You can use um, berries, carrots, onions, tomatoes and apples. But yeah, leave it in a kind of an undisturbed area. Check it daily, repair it as needed and you'll soon have yourself a, a nice regular 
supply of small animals. Right, okay, what else do we need to do here? I don't need to eat anything else just yet. Right, we've got our corded, uh, our rope, sorry. We've got our circuit boards and this will be the last wooden plank crafted. So let's get ourselves a mining drill crafted. There we go. Very cool. Looking forward to having this, I have to say. It's going to give me peace of mind if um, I'm running short on a particular order. Especially if in the future we're going to do things like um, diving. Um, because you need um, zinc for the oxygen tanks and stuff. And at one point I think I ran out of, uh, of zinc. So um, yeah, that'll be really handy. Uh, I'm going to make myself maybe a couple of shotgun shells and maybe a couple of rifle. There we go. Let's put the scrap away. A little bit of uh, fibre. And we'll leave that fishing trap and the grubs to one side and we'll, uh, we'll check if we can get to the lake without running into a hunter. We'll certainly go and see if we can go and place one of those because I'd love to get some more kelp by the way. So we'll definitely go and do that. Right, here's our mining drill. And I'm hoping that we will be able to place this under the stairs somewhere. I can't tell if there is something nearby. I don't think so. I think we should be fine. And I think this is a good, a good spot for the mining drill. We'll just place it probably... I think there will do. And we'll just turn that on. That's got to drill down into the ground before we can extract any resources. Actually, let's have a look. Uh, we can't see what that needs to upgrade that efficiency right now, unfortunately. It would have been nice to be able to see what ingredients we need to start stockpiling in order to upgrade that, but we'll see once that's done. Um, right, okay, so we're, we've got food, uh, we've got vegetables, I'll have a drink of water. No need to water the garden right now, because it's raining and the water will, the rain will top up the garden to some extent. Takes a while, but it does get there. Uh, maybe I'll go and see if we need to top up the fertiliser. Uh, maybe our plants are ready almost. Almost. I think they're going to be done today. I am going to drop a water in there after all. And I'm going to grab some more ash from in here. I've been kind of stockpiling that. You're not ready yet. Let's go and top this water up again. I might get that wolf actually. grab that. Let's go and top up the water for the plants again. And the fertiliser because we're going to need the um, these tomatoes. Oh, I thought I saw something up on the uh, on the snow line there. Right, okay, let's put this uh, ash away. I can see that that wolf is getting closer. How many arrows do we have? We have eight. We could kind of cheese this and get him to run away and come back again. It's kind of a bit cheaty, but it works. Saves using any uh, big expensive ammo. Right, okay, did we... I think we topped everything up there. Yep, lovely. So we could go out and do a little bit of looting. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know if we'll make it to the, the lake in time. It would be nice. Let's see if we can. Don't know if we've got any cougars around here or not. Or in fact any rogues or hunters anywhere wandering around. They 
do wander around the map as we've seen recently. Yep, that's a cougar. Oh, I don't like that sound in my ear. I really don't like that. I don't know where it is, but I'm going to get this. And just hope that I'm quick enough. There it is. Oh, there's a rogue bugger. And I got bits. We must have a road camp down here. I'm going to have to be careful. Oh my gosh. Right, okay. Yep, I need to be very careful. We could have rogues really close by. Yep. Oh no. Hopefully they're going after the... Uh, Hopefully they're going after the moose and not me. I don't think I started anything there. Oh, they're not very happy, are they? We're still bleeding. Oh, I might just use a, a bandage. I don't like the idea of that kind of continuing to bleed. Right, okay. Oof. Um, we've stumbled upon a lot of crates. I'm just going to take a moment here just to make sure nobody's following me. Yeah, we look fine. Right, okay. Let's pop this um, fish trap down. We'll put it in the shallows here. I just honestly just want to get this placed and get back home. So we'll place it there. We'll place some bait in there. Looks like you can place more than one. We'll put three in. Um, so just remember that the uh, fish trap is at the other end of the lake, away from the hunter base. That's fine. Okay, let's run back towards home. We've kind of achieved what we wanted to. I don't know if I'm feeling brave enough to dive in there for some kelp right now, shall I? Uh, yeah, I think we should. Okay, let's do it. I saw a bit of sandstone. And of course there's nothing, nothing to, to gather. I think maybe the, the loot hasn't had time to, to spawn in over here. We've got a tiny bit of kelp over here. Gosh, I keep running into hunters on this map. I need to be more careful. I think what threw me there was the uh, the cougar. Really forced me to sort of um, avoid the, the safest area to run through, um, to be honest. I'm likely to trigger a bear in here the way I'm just running around wildly, but... I don't want to come across a fishing hunter. If I can help it, let's try and get some kelp and we'll get out of here safely and head home again. I reckon I've pushed my luck about as far as I want to today. Yep, okay, that'll do. Right, so these uh, these traps, the animal trap and the fish trap, just place them away from kind of areas that you frequent, that you run through often, and you'll have a much greater chance of catching catching items regularly and uh, easily. Let's see if we can get back home now without dragging any more hunters our way. Yeah, bear. Bear is there. It's very distracting with all of this rain, all of the changes that have come in. There's the hunter base. I'm a little bit too close to them over there. Right, okay. I, I would like to. If I'm feeling cheeky is to get a little bit of a view of that hunter camp and see if we can unlock the map a little bit just to show us the, the view 
um, of them. Um, so this isn't too close. Uh, I don't know whether it's close enough to allow us to see any details on the map. Shall we just risk it and take a look? Hmm. Yeah, not not ideal. I don't really want to get much closer than that at the moment, especially not have after having to uh, outrun those uh, robes. Uh, but as we run around, you'll see that 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 map will just expand, and we'll uh, we'll have a good view of things as they approach. I might get this wolf. We're going to need some more food. We may as well. Yeah, let's try not to uh, mess that up. Let's butcher you up quickly. Oh, I think there was some work, by the way, on the butcher animation as well. It was a, a small hitch, I think, Cold Games said. Um, that he's just ironed out and improved to smooth that out a little bit. Oh, where was the cougar? Yeah, there was a there was a cougar and I just completely forgot. And ran down here anyway. Good job, me. A we we were towing an animal. Yep, we're towing an animal. Let's get out of the way. Give him a chance to chill out a bit. Oh, there's a there's a deer over there. It's getting late. I think it might be a little bit too late. Do we want to get... Do we want to do a little bit of deer hunting? Um, it's so awkward to get a headshot on a deer. He's sort of in the, in the tree. It's raining. I can't hear if anything's approaching. And I missed. I'm not going to bother. Not gonna bother running after him, I don't think. It's getting too late. Well, okay. Let's head back to the base. It's been a bit of a scrappy day. But lots of really good things to uh, to come. I look forward to using this map a little bit more. Let's wash hands. I've got a bear there. Yeah, I might run round this way and just open up this map just a little bit more. It's got a pretty good range on it. Um, with the fog of war, so, um, you know, you can kind of run quite close to areas you haven't unlocked already. And it will kind of just open those up nicely for you. Right, good. Okay, let's just go, go back in to the base, cook up a little bit of food, and I think we'll call the episode. Because it seems to have been quite a... quite an interesting one today. Got myself into trouble again. Uh, there is a wolf up there, but I'm going to leave him be. Let's head inside. <laughs> Oh, we're safe and safe and warm in here. Right, let's cook up a bit of food. Uh, we'll have the berry. I'm going to put the onion away. Keep that for steak and onions. Liver and onions, sorry. We've got a bit of kelp. Uh, we should be at full power now. We are. That is awesome. I'm going to make a, a lockpick, I think. We just need 75 masks. So by the time the food's done... And I've put some things away. We should be in a good spot. Let's just craft ourselves a couple of boards. Uh, grab a few more plank um, bits of scrap, sorry. Oh, very interesting. Can't believe I ran into the the rogue over there. I'm gonna have a look at the map in just a second. Let's grab some iron. There we go, let's put the light on so we can see. 
And right, 75 mass. We'll wait for that to tick up. So we've got our fish trap down. Let's drink you. We'll eat that. Keep that in my inventory. Let's have, I don't know, a bit of curl. Lovely. Right, okay. Now, it's dark. Uh, we can't see any hunter campfires over in that direction. Um, if we were up on the roof, we can just about see the campfire down there. Let's have a look at the difference the map makes. I'm going to zoom in with the, the shotgun on this one. Look at the rain. You can actually see the rain falling. That's pretty awesome. Okay. You can see our fire. We can see the lake. But unfortunately, I haven't got close enough to this hunter camp over here. And it looks like I didn't fully reveal the uh, rogue hunter camp over in this area either. I think this is going to be so exciting. Oh, look at that. The lightning flashes even illuminate the map as well. Hmm, nice. Okay. So I'm going to do it again, but without zooming. Uh, and yeah, once you've started unlocking more of the map, this is certainly a more manageable way just to get a quick top-down view. I like it. Right, what have we got outside? That is a wolf. I'd like to go and see how our mining drill is doing. Oh, it's right below me here. I wonder if I can reach it. I can! Right, lovely. We've only got a little ways to go. It's not using too much power right now. Right, let's turn that light off. Let's get ourselves the lockpick. We're just at 75 mass. Just need that to tick over. It's probably a, a rounding up. There we go. We just saw it move slightly there. Right, let's craft a, a lockpick. That's awesome. We've still got 413. I am going to put the generator back on and I am going to top that up. This is so distracting in the background. Can you see my my hair shadow? <laughs> it's very distracting. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to top up the generator and just keep that power um, as high as we can. I really want that sort of um, ready to go at a moment's notice. I think the next thing I'm going to build... I was thinking about this over the weekend. I'm going to build the mass fabricator, uh, fabricator. Now, I don't normally bother with this. I certainly didn't last time round. Um, because I like to rely on just dumping wood into the recycler. As you've seen, sticks are pretty, you know, a pretty good way of generating mass. But for those times when you just need, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 mass and you don't really have any items that you want to waste. I think switching on the mass fab fabricator will probably be a really good thing. So we'll make, wait for our um, mass to climb for the rest of the day. Uh, power's almost there anyway. It just takes eight boards and a bit of scrap and some electro uh, electronic electrical components. Uh, and we'll get that built. And I think that ought to save us uh, an awful lot of time and effort moving forward. Um, yeah, lovely. We've had a, a really good day. I'm going to turn on the refinery because uh, I want my next set of um, iron available to me if I need to build myself another lockpick. Um, but I think this is where I'm going to leave this episode. Uh, so sorry for the amount of talking um, that I did at the beginning in this one, but important to, to really go through and pick through all the changes in this update. I uh, hope you'll give it a try. I think it's a fantastic update. Really enjoying that map, as I say. My favourite thing. Uh, I love the new HUD overhaul. Um, I will build myself a rug eventually, <laughs> if I ever get enough cotton. Uh, looking forward to getting some easy uh, to catch animals and some fish maybe out of the lake. Um, get that um, fish oil farm in. 
uh, and maybe we'll build the uh, the lathe sometime soon uh, but for now uh, that's where I'm going to leave this episode thank you so much for joining me take care and I'll see you again soon bye for now